how do you treat yourself? Are you kind to yourself? Do you judge yourself and others? Well, seven months ago, I came out to China to try and find peace in my mind because I was always judging myself, always beating myself up. And for those seven months, I was learning Taoist philosophy, which has really revolutionized the way that I see myself. I'm much kinder and I judge myself and others less. So in this video, I want to share with you a speech that I've done at an all girls school. Now, because it's an all girls school, I want to talk about body image and beautiful and ugly. Hopefully at the end of the video, you'll be a bit kinder to yourself and consider yourself a bit more beautiful. And I hope the girls do too. Hello girls, my name is George, yes, um, your headmistress has given me a very nice introduction. I've known her for years, so it's been a pleasure to come talk to you. I've got three sisters, so me and my dad know how it feels to have strong, independent women just ruling the house, so um, it's a real pleasure to be able to talk to you. So, seven months ago, I finished university, well, even longer than that, last year I finished university, and I decided to follow my dreams and start a YouTube channel. Now, it was a cool idea, right? You get to make videos for a living. And I thought, oh, this is a great idea. Got a green screen, started talking, loving it. And then very quickly found, however, that making it on YouTube is harder than just making the videos. This is the number of subscribers I got per month when I first started, 76 and 38. Not even enough to cover my Snickers addiction. So I realized that actually following my dreams is harder than just being able to do it in two months. And I got confused a little bit sad and anxious. Now, a new character entered my life, and I've personified for it for, for us, and I've called it the underminer, OK? And this is the voice in our head that brings us down. I've even got some little sound effects that will work. OK, OK, that's yours. OK, wait. OK, I've got one. We've given the game away already. So my, under, my underminer tells me I'm not good enough, that I need to have everything sorted out, and it was began to dictate my life. I was just constantly in my head thinking, like, I'm not good enough and just kind of stressing myself out. Now, we all have the underminer, even if we may not realize it. We have this voice in our head that just tells us stuff that isn't necessarily true, but just likes to give us pain. Now, yours, you've already seen, is an evil witch. That's yours, OK? So that's, I mean, we need to laugh at our underminers, so that's why I've made it into these just like silly characters, because actually a lot of the time the things that they tell us just simply aren't true. So for you guys, it may be exam stress, you don't feel like you're good enough, you can't pass your exams, or you may have problems with your self-image, you think like, I'm, I'm so ugly, all the other girls are so much more beautiful than me. And we constantly give ourselves pain, and I'm here to tell you that actually it's really, really not, not necessary. So, seven months ago, I set off on a trip to China with on the mission to try and take my underminer down with using ancient Chinese philo philosophy as my weapon, okay? And what I'd like to do, just so I've got 15 minutes with you, and I'd like you to join me on this quest to try and take our underminers down. So I'm gonna share with you some of the biggest ideas that I learned and then see if we can take the underminers down together. But they're, they're strong foes, so I don't know if, if we're going to be able to do it. So I'm going to explain these ideas through my story, and we'll find out if it's possible at the end. So this is the Wudang Mountains. This is in the middle of China, and it's an absolutely beautiful set of palaces. It's the birthplace of Wudang Tai Chi and Wudang Kung Fu, and also it is the home of Taoism, which is an ancient Chinese philosophy that I'll explain soon. So I've actually got a drone. I bought this halfway through the trip and just got these absolutely incredible shots of all these amazing temples. And the basic plan was just to turn up at a monastery and see if they'll take me in, but this happened. Right, I've heard good things about this place. This is Purple Cloud Temple, first stop. Gong Fu. Uh? Gong Fu. Yes, sorry, what put them? Uh, no. <laughs> see you, see you. So basically, I just attacked these monks and asked them if I could do some Tai Chi and Kung Fu with them. But they just, first of all, I didn't speak any Chinese at that, at that point. And they didn't do it anyway. They're kind of academic monks. So they, they research Taoist philosophy and the religion, but they don't actually practice Kung Fu. It was a real long shot. I probably should have researched it a bit better. 
But what I ended up doing was just asking the locals, can you take me to a kung fu school? Because I thought kung fu is good for like the external, so like making your body just work better, and then also the internal sort of like peace of mind and stuff like that. But what ended up happening is that they took me to a Tai Chi school. Now, does anyone know what Tai Chi is? Could anyone tell me what Tai Chi is? Any brave? Yes. Don't tell a Tai Chi uh, person that it's like yoga. But, um, <laughs> but yes, in the sense that it is a form of like, some, it's an activity that can help like your well-being. So yoga is all about like flexibility. And in fact, what Tai Chi is, it's, it used to be a martial art. So it was made by Taoist monks who had to protect their temples from robbers and bandits. And so they started defending themselves and doing all these cool moves. But then in, in Taoism, uh, this... this uh, religion, they've got this idea of chi, and you guys may have heard about this, chi energy, it's like the energy in everything. So they started, you know, all these kind of punching moves and kicks and stuff like that, and slowing them down and synchronizing it with the breath, and this would cultivate your chi, making you live longer, and, and the ideal of these Taoist monks was to live forever, to be uh, immortals. So that's Tai Chi, and I stumbled across this Tai Chi school, and this was the master, his name is Master Gu, you can kind of think him about him like Yoda, so peace of, peace of mind you must have, he would tell me a lot, stuff like that. <laughs> and basically he was just a legend, and he was the only English-speaking master in the whole of the Wudang Mountains. So without planning anything, I just somehow got taken to this guy's school, even though like, I was, wasn't even looking for Tai Chi, and it was... Absolutely amazing. And there's just two other students there. So I called us the Tai Chi family. And on the YouTube channel, which I was continuing, this was like the new TV series of where I considered us in like an 80s TV show. But still being anxious and still having battles with my underminer, the journey had just begun. Alright, 6.30 a.m. <laughs> Not a bad view to wake up to. Down these things are difficult to put on. that men go through when that happens, but I can tell you it's bad. So yeah, I started Tai Chi training, and it was just this incredible journey of learning this art form that I really wasn't even searching, but then began to fall in love with. And as well as the Tai Chi, there's this thing called Taoism. Now, it's spelled with a T. It's kind of, there's two spellings of it, but in, in, in Chinese, it's Dao Jiao or Dao Jia, and so it's the Dao. And so although it's spelled with a T, let's call it Taoism. So, Taoism has is this amazing philosophy which kind of relates to our natural being. It's about making our lives simpler and connecting with nature more and, and really big ideas that can just help us live better. So, although you may think about it as a religion if you've heard it before, really the, the more important part or the bit, bit that can help us is the philosophy. Can anyone tell me what this is? Any brave? Anyone know what it is? Seen it before? Yes. The yin and yang, well done. Do you know what it is or what it tells us? Exactly right, yeah. So there's two parts. You've got the dark part and the light part. And this shows the opposing forces. So you've got light and dark, like you said, good and evil, male, female, uh, night, day, all these sort of things. And it has many, 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 many amazing kind of implications for such a simple thing made thousands of years ago. Uh, but we're just going to talk about... One. So this is me trying to cook Christmas dinner. So I was there for Christmas, the first Christmas I was away from home. I was quite sad, so I wanted to bring Christmas to China. Uh, but yeah, they don't have any dairy products. They don't have like an oven. So basically, I tried to cook Christmas dinner with a wok, and it didn't go very well. Merry Christmas. Jesus, 
Jesus was there. <laughs> hey, George. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Our Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is Christmas dinner in China. This is China's finest stuffing. Fried bread with burnt onion, fried potato and fried chicken. <laughs> which, <laughs> which is all burnt. <laughs> <laughs> this is the gravy. <laughs> it's, it's, oh my god. Luckily these guys don't know what any of this is supposed to look like, but you guys at home, I'm very sorry for what you're nah. witnessing. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Honestly, it's not good looking, but it's tasty. <laughs> So the wok literally is like a fiery inferno and then it just burnt everything. And yeah, it just went very wrong. But the idea of the yin yang can help with this because, okay, something that at first look looks like, okay, I've completely messed this up. This is really embarrassing. And actually I was pretty embarrassed how bad it was, but it kind of turned into this good thing. So this, this animation shows like the constant change and interplay between opposing forces. So in fact, it created this amazing memory for both of us and well, for all of us. And you know, the audience loved it as well. It was my first video that went like semi-viral, got like 60,000 views, um, just people loving seeing how bad it was. Um, so with, and the yin yang really shows us that you can't judge things in life. And this is the first big lesson um, that I've taken from Taoism in, in, in trying to defeat my underminer. Okay, so, my, my, your headmistress tells me that a lot of you have problems with your self-image, that you kind of think you're ugly, or... No, I didn't say that. <laughs> she didn't say that. Okay, I... She didn't say that. Well, I mean, she thinks you're all beautiful, and, well, we'll find out that you are all beautiful, but, okay, my sisters have problems with self-image then. We'll, we'll put it that way. Um, but we all have these kind of problems of kind of looking at ourselves and thinking, like, am I beautiful enough, et cetera. And I can guarantee you this is the underminer speaking. So I just want to quickly go over this and, and show to all of you that you are incredibly beautiful. You can't be any more beautiful than what you already are. So look at this very fluffy monkey. I find these monkeys all over the Wudang Mountains when I'm going for hikes. So this is a cute little baby monkey. But do you think this baby monkey thinks it's more cute than this baby elephant seal? I mean, it's... Exactly, you know? Okay, they're both cute. He's got a bit of a big nose. But... The point is, is that all these judgments, they don't exist in the natural world. You know, the monkey's just being a monkey. This elephant seal's just being an elephant seal. And there's this philosopher called Alan Watts, and he brings into all his lectures a seashell. And he says, wow, look at this seashell. It's so beautiful. There's not a single thing wrong with it. It's unbelievable. But then he asks, do you think the fish that live in these shells are saying, well, she looks a bit fat today, don't you think? Or looking and saying, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I don't really like the pattern of her lines. You know, like, they're really not very nice, are they? Not very well spaced. Of course they don't do that. But that's exactly what we do. And so we fail to appreciate, really, our true beauty. And so the judgments of beauty don't exist in the natural world. And the, and the crazy thing is, is that they don't exist in the human world either. So if you're in China, the ideal of beauty is to have as white skin as you can. Whereas, you know, in Europe, it's about being tanned and French and sexy. And the same way that if you were born 100 years earlier, you'd probably aspire to be a bit bigger than you would do now because that would be showing that you are better able to um, have a baby. So the point is, let me really clarify just how the idea of beautiful isn't something that exists in the real world. And that is, if you take a mirror selfie and then stick it on Instagram, you've, you've doled up and you're feeling great and you're like, yes, I look good. And then you go on Instagram, and then you scroll through and see models or like people that you just think are more beautiful than you. And then you look back in the mirror, and you feel less beautiful. But this is the crazy thing, because it's exactly the same situation. Two minutes apart, you look exactly the same, but you feel less beautiful. And that is the crazy thing about this concept of like, it's nice to have these ideas of beautiful, and like if you feel good about yourself, but then the minute you forget that this idea is just a word, that it's not actually something that's based in reality, it's an abstraction, then you're kind of, the game's over. Suddenly you're beating yourself up about something that doesn't exist in the real world. This is the classic tale of the princess and the frog, and the princess sees the inner beauty of the frog. So really, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It is true. You know, like, my granddad 
when he sees my grandma, this is my grandma, amazing woman, my granddad thinks she's the most beautiful woman in the world. And he's not lying, because for, for him, she is. And so this is really the silly thing, is that beautiful doesn't exist in the natural world. It doesn't even exist in the human world. And if we think that we're beautiful, we become beautiful. It, it really is that simple. And in Taoism, this is the whole idea that actually the world is far too complicated to describe. Words are simply abstractions. OK, so I want you to, I want just a practical example that we can um, think about when you're next judging yourself or others, OK? When you're judging yourself, when you're seeing other people judge other people, if someone is saying, oh, she's not pretty, or you know, like, you're saying, oh, I'm not pretty enough, she's so much more pretty than me, say to yourself, I am an otter, OK? <laughs> and why, why would you say that? Because, you know, otters, they're just otters, you know? They're just doing their otter business. You can't judge an otter for being a bit silly sometimes or doing stuff wrong sometimes. Also, like, an otter doesn't think itself as ugly, OK? So, now, you shouldn't be taking this seriously. This is a joke. So when you, you know, like, you say that you're not beautiful, you, you just say, I'm an otter. And you make yourself laugh, because it's such a ridiculous concept. But that was what I was doing, is, like, beating myself up, but forgetting, actually, the things that I was telling myself weren't necessarily true. So, you know, I'd be saying, oh, George, like, you need to have everything sorted out. And then I would then say, but George, you're an otter. <laughs> And it's just such a ridiculous thing. I'm like, OK, well, life is complicated, and I shouldn't take myself too seriously. OK? So my Tai Chi was improving. I was getting these ideas and really kind of being kind to myself, judging myself less. judging myself less, considering myself as an otter, but it was so cold, minus 15 without heating, that I'd just kind of be stuck inside all day and just kind of like still not being very kind to myself. So I still had a long way to go. Now, in Taoism, there's this thing called the Tao. This is the Chinese character. The Chinese language doesn't have an alphabet like we do. It has thousands upon thousands of characters, and this is a calligrapher who writes characters uh, for a living. So this is the Tao, and the Tao is everything. It is the underlying order of the universe. It is a beautiful sunrise. It is a silly panda. And it is you and I. But when we look at a sunrise, we think, wow, that's beautiful. When we look at a panda, it's like, wow, that panda's a panda. But then when we look at ourselves, we say, oh, I don't like my nose, or I don't like my cheeks, or you know, we, fo we focus on the things that we don't like about ourselves. And so again, Taoism can help us with this. And that is to see the Tao in ourselves, to be aware of the fact that we're just so complicated and we're one part of this amazing, rich, diverse world with so many different animals and creatures and just we're one part of that constant whole. So when I look at a sunrise, I think, wow, a painting every morning, what an amazing thing for us to be able to experience. Or a panda, I think, how could an animal survive that's so big and stupid? But I also think, Actually, it's an amazing thing. It has to consume 20 kilograms of bamboo a day just to survive. Like, it's ridiculous that they're alive. But it just makes me think, wow, the world is pretty amazing. And so you should be just as amazed when you look at yourself. Why do we focus on the bad things? So I really want you to feel this. You're probably going to laugh when you do this. But just for a moment, I want you to be in pairs and just Glance at the eyes of the partner, okay? I want you to see just how beautiful their eyes are, okay? <laughs> can anyone tell me what they just saw? Anyone can describe someone's eye? Anyone? So they were all ugly, were they? Or <laughs> if ugliness is a thing. Anyone? Yeah? Mm. Amazing. Thank you very much for sharing. And she's absolutely right, isn't she? I mean, all of us have this gem, this amazing piece of jewelry 
on us the whole time. No matter if you think yourself ugly, it doesn't matter what your face is. This is my mum's eye, and just look how amazing the eye is. It's just absolutely stunning. And so the next time you're kind of down on yourself, you're kind of beating yourself up about not being pretty enough, I want you, when you're looking in the mirror, to focus just on your eye. It's a very simple idea. But just focus on your eye and try and see the Tao in you. And just think, wow, I'm so complicated. I'm just this walking, talking miracle. Like my heart beats and I don't have to do anything. I'm breathing. And I don't have to think about it. It's just like I'm alive. Okay? So when you look at yourself in the mirror, just really try and feel that. Okay? And you'll naturally begin to just love yourself a bit more. Okay? So that's just very short, and there's so much more to Taoism. It's such an amazing philosophy. But I started trying to internalize these ideas that actually just, just appreciate myself a bit, bit more, to just be a bit kinder to myself, to not stress myself out about like, having everything sorted out because the world is complicated. And this is a picture of my transformation. That's what it feels like, kind of being controlled by my thoughts and you know, being anxious and yeah, just confused and then kind of feeling free from it. And so at the start of this speech, I said... Is it possible for us to overcome our underminers? And saying just how powerful the underminers are. And my underminer is still with me. And that's OK, because the world's complicated. We're not supposed to have everything sorted out the whole time. It's OK to find things difficult. It's OK to kind of be worrying about stuff. But the real lesson from this is, like, actually, you can challenge your thoughts. The negative thoughts that you have, a lot of them aren't true. They're based on things that aren't necessarily accurate. It's just about your perception of the world. Like, I need to have everything sorted out. Or, like, beauty is this thing that I need. And, in fact, actually, it's not in, when, in fact, we found out that it's a subjective thing, that if you really believe yourself as beautiful, then you become beautiful. So the idea is of don't judge yourself or others. You're too complicated. So think about yourself like an otter. And appreciate your complexity to see the Tao looking at your eye in the mirror. These are simple things. I really would love for you to try these things. Or just like joking with your friends. Just like, well, you know, like someone's being mean to someone else. And it's like, well, she's an otter, so you can't judge her. Stuff like that. If you do that, you can make yourselves laugh about it. But that actually is powerful in itself. Okay? And then just seeing yourself looking at your eye rather than focusing on the negative things. So I'm about to start a job. So this is my social media, georgethompson.uk, on Instagram and Facebook. So there's loads of ideas that I'll be sharing on the channel that hopefully, you know, I'm a few years ahead of you guys, but I hope that these ideas can help you because they've really helped me. And, yeah, if you want to send me your otter stories, you can message me. I'd love to hear them. And, yeah, we, this is an amazing educational institution where you're going to learn so much and education is such an amazing thing. You get to see more of the world. The more you learn, the more you actually perceive. And so keep on learning. But also, we don't really get an education for who we are and how to deal with our thoughts. And I hope that this is hopefully a motivation for you to just try and maybe start reading ideas of psychology and philosophy and just really challenging your thoughts and asking if they're accurate. Because we all have this inbuilt philosophy that's a product of our upbringing, but we just never seem to challenge it. So thank you very much. I wish you all the best on your journey, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>